and um, so we will uh, All right, so here's Faraday's law. This is Faraday's law, which I showed you uh, on the iPad. The EMF induced, so what this diagram shows you is the following. Okay, so in this diagram, see, magnetic field is increasing at uh, 0.02 Tesla per second. So uh, here's um, the blue lines are the magnetic field lines. And this field is increasing at 0.2 Tesla per second. And that induces an electric field in that sense. Um, the electric field is, a, uh, the field lines are loops and they go all the way to infinity. And if you place an, here you placed a wire and that electric field drives a current in this wire and that can be sensed. Again, yeah, that's what the ammeter is measuring. Of course, if you place the wire here, the electric field would be smaller here and the uh, electric current will be smaller, okay? So the EMF induced in this loop, the EMF, the voltage induced in this loop is equal to a minus d phi by dt, okay? So, which is, uh, and that is the magnetic flux. And the magnetic flux is the number of field lines uh, threading this loop. So the EMF will increase as the EMF will be maximum if the current were enclosing all the, um, all the field lines. And once all the field lines are included, that would give you the maximum EMF, okay? Anyway, this is the Faraday's law, the EMF in, induced through this, in, in this loop of wire is equal to minus time rate of change of the magnetic flux. And the magnetic flux is the, uh, the you can think of the magnetic flux as the number of field lines, magnetic field lines threading this loop. All right, the magnetic flux, uh, so the magnetic flux is the magnetic field strength times the area of the loop times cosine theta. Theta is the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field. So let's go back to the previous slide and see this expression, see the derivation of this expression of the magnetic flux. Okay. And that's what this, uh, this shows you. Uh, flux is denoted by phi, the subscript B telling you it's a magnetic flux and magnetic flux is defined as V dot area. Okay, so uh, magnetic flux is the number, you can think of them as, as the number of magnetic field lines threading this area. <coughs> Okay, so right now, so here's a uniform magnetic field and you have this area, this is the area vector. And right now, um, the most, uh, a maximum flux is threading this area. If the area were oriented like this, now there is no field lines going through the area, okay? And so the flux is zero. Uh, through this area, there are the effective area perpendicular to the field is only this much, okay? So there are fewer field lines threading this area, okay? So we define this area vector. There is a magnetic field and the flux through this area works out to B dot A, where B is that vector, A is that vector. And so the flux would be B A times cosine theta, which was, which was the expression we saw, okay? So B A cosine theta data. Flux is that. Okay, so let me show you a simulation. <clears throat> okay, so uh, here's the area vector. Uh, blue lines are magnetic field lines, and this is the area vector, and uh, <coughs> there's the flux. Now we'll tilt the area vector, and you see the flux is decreasing when the area vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, now the flux through the area is zero, okay? So you see the flux is maximum when the area vector and the magnetic field lines are parallel to each other. All right, um, so uh, Faraday's law states that the EMF induced in this loop of wire 
is equal to minus time rate of change of the magnetic flux threading that loop. Okay. So again, essentially, if you have the number of field lines uh, changing uh, through a loop, then you induce an EMF, you drive a current. And we saw various ways of doing this, okay? So when you move this magnet back and forth, the number of field lines threading that loop changes and you induce an EMF in this uh, loop of wire, which drives a current, okay? Uh, so again, move this magnet back and forth. You can flip this magnet, that'll change the flux. You can bring an electromagnet back and forth, which is the same as doing, uh, moving this magnet back and forth. Or you could, uh, what you could do is you could connect an AC source to this loop, which would be the same effect as flipping this magnet back and forth. If you connect an AC source to this loop, you would induce a, uh, induce a current in, in this loop, even though this loop is not connected to any batteries, okay? So uh, that's, uh, that's Faraday's law. EMF induced in that loop is time rate of change of, negative time rate of change of the flux. And the flux, as you saw, was B times A times cosine theta, okay? Now this, so now looking at this equation, okay, you induce an EMF as long as this right-hand side is not zero, okay? So if the magnetic field were constant, area was constant, and theta was constant, d by dt of that would be zero, okay? So what that is saying is if you did not move this magnet, nothing was changing with time, and uh, no EMF will be induced, okay? So to induce an EMF, you could either change the magnetic field, you could e or, or change the area, or change theta, okay? So you could either in increase the strength of the magnetic field or decrease the strength of the magnetic field, and this, uh, this would be non-zero. You could change the area, which would, uh, if the area changes, then uh, this term would be non-zero and you're inducing an EMF. Or, you could change the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field. And that is, if you flip, flip this magnet, if you turn around this magnet, then you're changing theta, okay? And uh, you would induce an EMF. Now here's the deal. You could either flip the magnet or uh, just keep the magnet steady and flip this loop of wire, okay? and that would be changing the angle theta. And what it turns out that technically, keeping the magnet steady and flipping this wire is more easy, okay? And that's how we pretty much produce all electricity currently, okay? So that's what is shown here. So here's a magnet, and the magnetic field lines are in that direction. We'll hold the magnet steady, and what we'll do is we'll flip the wire. So we are changing the angle theta. Okay, so there we go. Let me show you. Okay, so the simulation. So there is the magnet. Okay, and uh, we'll make it. And that's a very strong magnet, seven Tesla. Um, uh, well, so anyway, we'll. So that's a strong magnet. Anyway, there's the magnet. And what we'll do is we'll flip this wire. Okay, so and there you see, you have induced a current in the wire. Uh, there was an electric field uh, that was induced wherever the wire was, which was driving the current. Okay, so. Okay, so now how do you turn the wire? Okay, so. In a windmill, the wind turns the blades and the blades turn this wire. So at the heart of the windmill is this loop of wire that is turning in this magnetic field and that's how uh, it's producing electricity, okay? So what is happening is in the windmill, uh, the energy of the wind turns that blade of wire and that blade of wire is turning this, uh, turning this loop of wire. So it takes work to turn the loop of wire. So you, what you are doing is 
converting some other form of energy into electrical energy. In a coal power plant, you burn, uh, you burn coal, which is used to uh, produce heat, and uh, uh, you use, well, you burn coal, and you boil water and produce steam, and the steam turns this wire. So what you end up doing is you, in a coal power plant, the chemical energy stored in, in the coal is converted to electrical energy. In a nuclear power plant, you split nuclei the, from the heat released, you're producing steam, which is turning this wire, okay? So right now, all electricity, well, almost all electricity being generated is by this method. Uh, you figure out some way to turn this loop of wire, which is sitting between magnets and you're producing electricity. At a dam, it's the moving water that uh, turn, is turning this loop of wire. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause now and 